Thank you for joining me today. Before we get started, I want to take a minute to tell you about a new app called Get Upside that we at the Rideshare Guy have been using to save up to 25 cents per gallon on gas. Pretty awesome. The app is completely free to use. All you have to do is upload your receipt after you buy gas and then cash gets added to your account. The cash adds up over time and you can deposit your funds straight to your PayPal account whenever you want. Some drivers are using GetUpside to save $50 per week just buying gas from their favorite gas stations. So now listen closely because this deal gets even better. I'm going to give you a short code that'll get you an additional $0.15 cents per gallon sign-up bonus. So you just download the GetUpside app from the App Store, open the app, and enter the promo code. It's WQ8JR. Now, another way you can get your $0.15 cent per gallon sign-up bonus is to visit the rideshareguy.com forward slash GetUpside app. That's G-E-T and then Upside, U-P-S-I-D-E, and then app, A-P-P. Check it out. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, Dojo Nation, welcome, welcome. It's so great to have you here with us today. I have a very special guest today. I have a, a, a relatively new driver named Angela Motes, Angie. She's a new driver for Uber. She's been driving for three months here in the Sacramento market. However, Angie has had some pretty remarkable, crazy, unfortunate experiences to share uh, she was my driver when I came back from the airport, and after I heard uh, just uh, one of her stories, I thought, "Oh my God, I got to bring Angie onto the onto the pad onto the podcast." So, Angie, welcome to the dojo. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, great, great. So, um, can you tell us a little bit like your your background, what you did before driving, and um, yeah, and what kind of car you're driving and, and um, how long you've been doing it and whether you're driving for Uber or Lyft. Okay, um, I drive for Uber. Um, before I uh, started driving with Uber, I was a flight attendant for the last five years and before that in mortgage for 18 years. Mm. Um, I have um, been driving for Uber now for about three months. Mm -hmm. and um, I, don't remember, it, I don't remember what kind of car you had. It was a, I have a Honda Civic EX. Oh, great. And uh, it's my baby. Yeah, that's awesome. And so you were a flight attendant. Okay. I, I didn't catch that the first time we talked. Um, and w where did you t typically fly? Did you have like a regular route or did you get to fly no, all over the place? <laughs> no, I, I just um, did anywhere from a one to five day trip. And it's wherever they needed me to go. And you get layovers, but you're usually too tired to do anything. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. What airline were you with? Um, I was with Frontier and then I was with Delta. Okay, great. Great. All right. Did you like that? Being a, being a flight it. attendant? Absolutely loved it, but it kept me away from my family. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine that's kind of difficult being away for five days at a time. Uh, it was more like for five months at a time. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, because you have two days off in between. But when you're based in New York and your family's in California, you don't have time to fly in just to visit for a day and then go back. So right, right, right. Okay. So uh, 
Great. So let's just jump into this. So the way we met, um, me and Angie met, um, she picked me up at the Sacramento airport and um, she uh, gave me a ride back to my home. And, um, you know, being curious as I am, I started to ask her about any of her experiences. W- would you mind telling the same story you told me about um, what I'm calling it, the lady on the mountain after midnight story? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I had been driving for about 10 hours and I was going to go home and they pinged me with a um, one last trip. And so I was like, oh, all right, I'll take it. So it it was up in an area called Shingle Springs, which is like mountainous area and it's very remote and dirt roads and stuff like that. So And what time I, was what time was it when this when this happened? This was about one o'clock in the morning. One in the morning. Okay. On a weekend yeah. night. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, I'd never had any bad experiences, so I didn't have anything to worry about. Uh so I go up there and I get to this um I go about four miles up this dirt road and uh, stop at this guy's house. And he's got his very, very intoxicated friend um, that he puts in the back of my car. And I said, he's not going to throw up, is he? And I'm like, no, no, he's fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the route that they had me to drive him went another eight miles up that same windy mountain road. Now, keeping in mind, it's pitch black. There's no lighting because it's a mountain road. Yeah. And it's narrow and, you know, anyway. So. And is it, being, is, is it paved or no? Uh, yes, but there's dirt all over it. Right. Okay. All right. So it's like a, a pretty narrow road going up the side of a mountain. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I start going up this road and as I'm driving, the driver, I mean, the passenger flings my car door open while I'm driving. Now he's on the opposite side. So, you know, being a narrow road, I tried to pull off to the side as much as I could without scratching up my door and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm telling you, you can't, you can't open my door when I'm driving. You got to sit, sit in there and just, so he's hanging out the door. Now he starts throwing up. He's dragging his hand along the ground The ground is covered with red clay soil. So I finally get him to get back up. So he come, he gets back up in the car, shuts the door and starts wiping his hands off all over my seat. So now I've got red clay soil all over my seats. So, Um, so this guy's, so he's pretty drunk then if he's, if he's, if he's so out of his head that he thinks it's, it's, it's a good idea to open the door of a moving car. And rub his hand along the dirt while the car is moving. That's kind of crazy behavior, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I wish that was the worst of it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, this guy, he just, um, he kept doing that repeatedly. We only had to go eight miles up the road and it took about 40 minutes to get up there because I kept having to pull off the road and make him get back in. And during that time, he threw up in the side, in the pocket of the side of my door and all over the outside of my car. And it was just a mess. It was, it was awful. And I honestly would have kicked him out, but I didn't know what my rights were. I didn't know if I was allowed to say, okay, you're putting me and my car at risk. So I'm going to make you get out here. And as intoxicated as he was, I was concerned that if somebody else hit him, that I would have liability for that. So I didn't know. Yeah, no, I know. There, there's really no training, you know, when you start driving right. for Uber and Lyft. I mean, I, right. I agree with you. I did my I, best to deal with the guy. Yeah. I mean, I put up with, I, I agree. I, I've put up with some unpleasant people because it seems smarter to put up with them, get them out of the car rather than, you know, cause a problem. That, right, that that could exactly. that could turn into something much worse. So I think you did the right thing. Although this is a really extreme situation you were in. Um, plus, yeah. you're kind of at risk because you're out in the middle of nowhere with, uh, uh, you know, you're a woman and he's a man, and he's intoxicated. Right. Yeah, hey, amen. Yeah. Um, so we continue. We get all the way up to the top of this road, and it's a dead end. Like I mean, there's just signs all around that say dead end, and you can't see a house anywhere. And I'm like, are you sure this is where you wanted me to drop you off? And 
And the guy is like, I'll be okay. You know, he's like real drunk. And so he gets out of the car and I think that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, phew, okay, this is finally over. Then he flings the front door of my car open on the passenger side and starts flailing his arms around. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's, he goes, I'm looking for my friend and I'm, I'm seriously like, becoming sarcastic now i'm like do you think your friend is invisible because he put you in the car by yourself and he's not here i said now do you want me to drop you off here or not and at that point he grabbed my wrist of my hand that was near the passenger side door Mm -hmm. and uh my fight or flight reflex went in because literally this place where we're at looks like a place that you would see as where they found the body on America's most wanted. So, you know, there's no, no houses around. I don't think anyone could hear me scream, you know, so I'm not taking any chances. So when he grabbed my wrist, I punched him. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And I, it's like, I felt kind of bad, but it's like, I didn't want to end up becoming a statistic. So yeah, I punched him in the face Yeah, and he, backwards and but he's still holding on to my car so I pulled my foot out and pushed him out of the door and then pulled the door shut Mm. and then Mm. got the car in gear and took off and went about a half a mile down the road where I parked and put on my flashers and was just shaking because I didn't know what was what had just happened right right Right. And I didn't know what his intentions were or anything like that, you know? No, you experienced the trauma. I mean, that. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. A, a police officer or a ranger or whatever it was came up behind me and saw my flashers and asked me if I was okay. So I told him the whole story and um, he escorted me down the road and went looking for the guy mm, because mm. He, that's, he technically assaulted me. Right. Right. Um, right. So. Hmm. I, the, the officer actually said that I was smart to fight because I didn't know what his intentions were. So, oh, absolutely, he could have had a weapon. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. terrible. So everybody asks me now if I carry a weapon, and I don't even know if we're allowed to do that. I yeah, mean, I know you have a gun, but like a stun gun, everyone says pepper spray, and I'm like, that would be really stupid to spray pepper spray in my car. Yeah, there's um, yeah, there's a uh, pepper gel which uh, I actually carry in my car. Um, so it doesn't, um, you know, it just hits its target. It doesn't like put fumes in the, in the air. Um, but even then, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's always, that's always going to be a big, big decision to make, you know, whether you're going to actually inflict harm on somebody else, you know, right. I think the only, well, t- the only time uh, I, the only time I would do it is if I felt I was going to be harmed, you know? Right. And uh, that's, that's the only reason why I hit him. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a violent person, but I felt very point, you know? Yeah. I mean, he had no reason to grab my arm. The ride was over. He was to the destination he said he wanted to be at. And yeah. uh, so it was, it was frightening. And, and as a result of that, I have made it to where I will not go up into mountainous areas at night. Yeah. Well, that seems like a good, <laughs> a good rule to follow. <laughs> Especially, yeah. I mean, so if you're out there, <laughs> if you're out there, uh, uh, men and women of the Dojo Nation, yeah, uh, you got to be really careful, especially late at night, about who you, who you, how far you go, you know, to pick somebody up. Um, especially if it's on a weekend after you know eleven o'clock, odds are the person you're going to pick up, uh, you know, has been drinking. I mean, who else is up that late, you know, looking for a ride? Uh, in most cases, it is somebody who's inebriated. That's why I don't drive at night. I, I, I drive early in the morning, and I just stopped. I just stopped going out at night. The only night I drive, Angie, now is uh, New Year's Eve. That's the only time I'll, I'll drive at night. Um, yeah. So what happened? Like so what? I'm home with my dogs at night now. So. You You what? Try to be home at do- at night with my dogs now. There you go. That sounds a lot lot more enjoyable. Um, so, what happened to your car then? So, you you also shared with me that um, you tried to get uh, Uber to charge this asshole for um, 
for all the red clay that he put on your seat. And, what, and you had a, ran, ran into a whole bunch of issues with that. Can you can you tell uh, tell my audience how that went? Yeah. So um, I when I got home, I was still pissed off. So I mean, obviously, I, I'm still kind of mad about it. But um, I immediately went and got my camera out and took pictures of it, but it was kind of dark. So they, you know, maybe that was the the initial issue, but I sent the pictures in to Uber and, and I also made a report about the guy grabbing my arm and that I had to fight him off to get him out of my car and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, Uber's response to the pictures was that it was a fraudulent claim. Mm. Mm. They said that there was no visible damage to my car and it was a fraudulent claim. And um, so then I was obviously angry. Right. So the the next morning I got up as early as I could and I went straight to the inspection station and had them look at it and them take pictures and them do a report. Mm-hmm. And they put that into Uber saying, yes, she does need a cleaning fee. There's vomit in her car. There's red clay all over the seats. And mind you, this was a car that was that I had had for three weeks. Oh, wow. Mm. Brand new condition. No, mm. d- no d- stains, no scratches, nothing. Wow. Wow. So, so needless to say, I was very pissed about all the stuff that was all over my car. Yeah. And, um, so anyway, the, um, Uber takes their report and says, still don't believe you. Hmm. Wow. And yeah, even do, with do, their, pictures. do, do and they, do, do they give any reason why? Just, no, they, they, they just, just say, they, they just say no, no damage to my car and that it was a fraudulent claim. Hmm. And so about a week later, I get this, uh, customer or this uh, driver satisfaction survey mm. and says, you know, how do you like driving for Uber? Uber? And so I told them, mm. <laughs> I said, you know, I thought it was great at first, but since somebody threw up in my car and you guys called me a liar and, and refused to pay for the damage to my car, I think you pretty much suck. And I'm going to let everybody know that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, five minutes later, I had a hundred dollar cleaning fee in my car, in my uh, bank account, which, no. I thought was pretty, um, you know, I mean, I was grateful that they finally paid me something, but I don't trust them as much because of the fact that they called me a liar and basically tried to deny my claim. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Twice. Right. Yeah. Even Without- when their own people said that it needed to be paid. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, I wrote an article about a year ago about, uh, yeah, people who had, you know, had legitimate cleaning fees denied, and 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 they really gave no reason. Um, you know, Uber and Lyft gave no reason, so it's it's a common experience. Uh, but but a hundred dollars, even then, I mean, did that? Did you have somebody clean it? Did you pay somebody to clean it? Did that cover I, it? I actually went and bought a steam cleaner hmm. and cleaned it myself. Mm-hmm. The steam cleaner was a hundred dollars, but I figured if it, anyone ever does that again, at least. I can make sure it's going to get clean. Right. Uh, so right. I found this little Bissell one that's made for cars that you can get at Walmart. Just oh, okay. FYI to the view out there that might want one. Yeah. Uh, and um, it cleaned my upholstery beautifully. Mm. And then I had to clean the vomit out of the side of my door, which was disgusting. Yeah. And then there was a, a couple little scratches to my door, but I was able to buff them out pretty well. Mm-hmm. But um, from me, ha- from him flinging the door open and it scraping against trees. Yeah. And the thing that made me mad about that was that I had literally just gotten that panel of my car repainted. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was just a big bowl of bad luck, man. Just get getting that mm-hmm. ride. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that story. I think that'll make um, everybody who's listening a little more sensitive to, you know, who they're going to go pick up and what time of the day they're doing it. And um, I would I would say, like, honestly, um, I was told by the inspection station that if somebody's doing something that you don't like in your car, like if they're like, say, opening my car door while I'm driving. 
mm-hmm. you have every right to kick them out at that point. Right. You can pull over the stop and make them exit your car. Yeah. Um, I looking back, I would have done that now, mm-hmm. but back then I was trying to be nice. Right. Right. And you didn't know, and, you didn't know if you could get in trouble for doing that. Right. Yeah. But I, I just want to put that out there for people. If somebody is, is, uh, vandalizing your property or doing something that makes it that puts you in danger on the ride you have every right to kick them out yeah even if you just feel endangered or threatened right. yeah you have the right to stop and ask them to get out of your car right yeah 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 it's a sensitive uh, issue um you know passenger safety and driver safety uh because Two people that don't know each other are suddenly inside of this little metal box, you know, and they're going to have this uh, driving experience together. And sometimes it's it's not uh, it doesn't go well. Um, so now that you've been driving for three months, what do you what do you uh, most like about driving, and what do you least like about driving? Um, I most like about driving the fact that I can dictate my own hours. I like that I can um, go to the area I want to drive in at that time or, you know, like some days I want to do shorter trips and I know I can go downtown and pick up like just little short trips Mm -hmm. all day, you know? Yeah. Or I can go to the airport if I need a little break and some downtime, I can go there and, and I have a little 30 minute break while I'm waiting for them to assign me a trip or. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But I also like, um, having, the flexibility in my schedule of saying what days I can work. Yeah. Yeah. What hours I want to work or if I want to go to another city and work, Mm -hmm. you know, you can go, you can do it right when you, when you want. So the the freedom and the flexibility you Mm really, you really like, um, what is it? You listen to music and stuff while I'm working. Yeah. That's great. Huh? Yeah. I, uh, I've uh, really learned to love jazz music, which uh, I would never have really listened to it much. But, you know, sitting in my car for long periods of time, I, I've listened to a lot of it and I've I've gotten to know different artists and it's fantastic. That part of it is really great. Plus podcasts, too. You can listen to all these great podcasts. Um, I can go to the 80s music because it's kind of benign. It was before they started swearing on the radio and it's kind of oh. fun. Most people know a lot of the songs. So Yeah. 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 For me, it's the seventies, but um, yeah. Um, wh- what do you like the least? Uh, the least I would say. Besides. I, I, drunk, some, dr- I would like. Huh? <laughs> besides drunk men on the side of mountains. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely a downer. Yeah. But um, no, I think the the thing that I like the least is that I feel like um, they should have an some options in the cute right in the uh, selection of t- uh, trips. Like have I mean I know they show you how many miles it is and things like that, but it would be nice if they would give you an option whether you want to work long trips, middle, me, like yeah. what length of trips you'd like to work. Yeah. Because I, there's a lot of people who change that from day to day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're actually in California um, today, actually, because I just wrote the article. It's, it's, it's out now. Um, Uber, so this will affect you. Um, 30% of Uber drivers today are getting this new feature where when you get the ping, the uh, so we're recording this on, on Tuesday the 3rd of December. So when you get the ping, it's going to tell you um, how long the ride is. It's going to tell you the destination. It's going to tell you how long it'll take, and it'll tell you how much money you're going to make. So, um, so you'll have all that information, and then you can decide whether you want to take the ride or not. So right right now you don't know, right? You don't know. You just go pick somebody up and and w- once you start the ride, then you know the destination. Right. Um so sometime in the if it's either today for you or sometime in the next few weeks, you're going to have the, have that feature where you're going to know all that information. So that'll really take care of that issue you just said because then you can if it's not the kind of ride you want, you just don't accept it, you know, and just wait till you get the one that you want. So can I ask you a question? Of course. Okay, so um, I'm. I always wonder, like, um, oh my 
gosh, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> um, like when you decline a trip, mm -hmm. like that lowers your rating. No, it doesn't lower your rating. Um, it just impacts your, you know, your, your, um, uh, your cancellation rate. So when you cancel on somebody, that affects your cancellation rate. Um, but your acceptance rate um, is, is the percentage of people that you accept, you know, versus don't accept. So um, Uber, as of, as of today, said that the acceptance rate doesn't really matter. So yeah. whether you accept or not, it won't affect, uh, it won't affect you at all. Your, your rating, your star rating is only based yeah. on what your, what your uh, passengers give you. Right. Yeah. So um, I don't okay. know what your rating That's is, but yeah. Good because like there's times that it'll send a trip to me and, and I've accepted them because I had forgotten to turn off that button and I didn't want my mm. um, percent to go down to, you know, yeah. and when I first started it, like the, the training shows you some things, but it doesn't really give you all the information. Yep. And, and so like uh, the first time I went out Ubering, this is kind of a funny story. I was Ubering at, I, it was probably one forty five, like when the bars start closing. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so all of a sudden I'm getting pings and I'm like, and I'm, I'm like, I thought I had shut off my app. I didn't know how to shut off the app. I thought that if I, shut it off while I was driving somebody that it would, uh, end the trip and, or, or cancel their trip. And oh. that would convince me. So I, so I was like trying and trying and trying and, and to figure out how to shut it off. Meanwhile, I missed like 25 calls. And oh. so my rate was super low initially oh. and my score or whatever it is that you just said. Yep. Yeah. And then, it was just really, I mean, looking back, <clears throat> sorry, looking back, I, uh, I thought that should have been one of the important things that they teach you up front. Yeah. How, how, to, how to turn the app off when you have a, someone in your car. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. or even if you accept a ride that before you even pick that person up, you can still go on there and say no more rides. Right. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, mean, I learned trial by fire. Yeah, now my is pretty good, but yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, you de you definitely learn a lot just by by doing this. Um, yeah. Great. But I like the people I meet. I think they're. I, I I rarely rarely have anybody bad. I think other than that one guy, I've only ever rated one person a one, and that's just because I didn't ever want her in my car again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I. I th I think that's one of the best parts of being a driver is the passengers. You know, you can have some really great conversations like you and me. You know, we had a really good connection when we when when you picked me up, and that's one of the nicest things that that, that happens being uh, being in this business. Um, all right, I'm going to ask you one more question before I get to the final three because um, you touched on it a little bit when we were talking in the car. Um, like, where do you see yourself? Let's just say in five years. So you're driving for Uber. That's certainly not what you want to do full time uh, for a long time. What's what, It's kind of a gateway drug, you know? It's sort of like something pe people do to get to the next thing that they really want to be doing. So at this stage of your life, where do, where do you see yourself in, in like five years? What would be, what's your goal? Um, just self-employed. Hmm. I, I was kind of going towards the real estate market but in the last week or so I've decided that's not really where I want to hang my hat I did that for 18 years already and mm -hmm. and I just kind of want to figure out where I'm gonna go with this mm -hmm. so I mean I'm I know it's going to be something self-employed I I actually really truly do enjoy this but I, um, I agree it's just not but, enough money yeah. Right. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sorry. Honestly, my my biggest dream, if I could do it, if I had the money, mm. would be to open or to buy like a ranch and build kennels and have a dog rescue there. Oh wow! Wow, that's a that's so. that doesn't sound that expensive to do. No, that's but a, I I would probably um, 
base it on pit bulls, Rottweilers, and all the dogs that get killed at the shelters. You know, the the ones that are considered non-aggressive dogs are not put down, but um, there's no bad dog. There's bad owners, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So. Well, you had meant to be able to rescue a bunch of dogs and and find them good homes. Yeah. Well, you had mentioned to me in the car that you were thinking about um, writing a book on forgiveness. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that is that something you're still thinking about? Or oh um, yes, yes, definitely. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Um, Yeah, I've had a lot of people do a lot of really bad things to me in my life, and. And I'm at peace with it. You know, it's like I, even with the guy, sorry. The guy on the mountain. The guy up in the mountains. Yeah. Um, You know, I, I try to think of it as he was intoxicated and didn't know what he was doing. I hope he didn't know what he was doing. You know, I want to believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise I have to believe he was kind of a monster. Yeah. I I like to live in a world where monsters don't exist. Right. Right. Um, you know, for me, I've learned that um, forgiveness is like for your survival. You know, it, it, you can't have a negative mind and a positive life. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of your superpower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, you know, I mean, I've forgiven everybody, whether they asked for it or not. Mm-hmm. You know? Right, right, right. Well, yeah. it, it it benefits you quite a bit to to be in a place of oh, forgiveness. Yeah. yeah, it's very freeing. Yeah, exactly. It, it you can let go of things. Takes away the bad feelings that you have. Yeah, so. yeah. All right. Well, I totally support you to write a book. I'm. Uh, that's something that doesn't cost money either. You just gotta right. uh, make time. Make time to do it, which you you, you can do uh, as a as an Uber driver for sure. Yeah. So, good for you. All right. The final three questions. Angie Motes, what is your favorite movie of all time? Oh my gosh! Yes, uh, favorite movie of all time. Mm-hmm. Probably Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Wow. Yeah. All right. I, That's uh, the one with Sigourney Weaver and uh, Bill Murray. Well, I, I I was thrown between that and Stripes. <laughs> <laughs> you like Bill Murray? <laughs> I do like Bill Murray. <laughs> See, if I had to pick a Bill Murray movie. I would think it would be um, Groundhog Day. I really liked him in Groundhog Day. Also great. Yeah, also great. And yeah. Meatballs, too. Meatballs, too. <laughs> cool. No, not Meatballs, too. Meatballs, also. Also, yes, yes, yes. Was there a Meatballs, yeah. too? Probably. I think there might have been. Yeah, yeah. Okay, on your phone, um, you know how you have pictures for for the wallpaper? Um, what uh-huh. What pictures do you have on the wallpaper of your phone? I have a picture of my three daughters. Nice. That's a great answer. Love that answer. Um, and the final uh, final question is, um, you, you're walking into a room. There's just a whole lot of people there, and, and they're playing a song. It's like your theme song, your favorite song that sort of sets the mood for Angie Motes walking into the room. What is the song? Oh, oh my goodness. Um can't think of the name of it. Hmm. It's Marvin Gaye. It's oh, yeah. the one that Rob Thick got sued over. I can't think of the name of the song, though. It's the one that who got sued over? Robin Thick. Robin Thick. He had he had a song called Blurred Lines, and it was uh, stolen from the music of the Marvin Gaye song I'm trying to think of, and I can't think of the name of the song. Huh. Um. <laughs> Oh, blurred that. lines, blurred lines. Not I heard it through the grapevine. No, no, no. What's going on? Nope. Let's it, get, it was a it was his function. Let's get it on? No. Sexual healing? Nope. All good, but not the one. This one was like straight funk beat. The same beat as blurred line that's where Robin Thick got sued. Huh. I don't know. But I oh my gosh, I can't believe I can't think of uh it's uh it has a line in it called we used to go out and party. Hold on, I'm gonna Google the lyrics. Got, got to give it up. That song, I, I don't care. Where I, that's, that's it. That's cool. <laughs> yep. Oh, this is a good song. 
All right. I could dance wherever I am. I could be in the grocery store and I could dance with my Yeah. It's a great song. So, ladies and gentlemen, Angie Motes enters the room. <laughs> All right. I'm glad we found it. I'm glad we found it. All right, um, Angie, thank you uh, so much. Angie Motes, Uber driver for three months. Thank you for sharing your story. It was uh, generous of you to tell us the stories and um, share all your experiences. And I'm sure you're a huge benefit to a lot of drivers out there, especially when they're uh, looking at a sensitive, uh, delicate situation such as you had. They'll think twice about it. So thank you for entering the dojo. Oh, my pleasure. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna, it's going to automatically load up, and you're going to get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things Rideshare Dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.